Like this billboard, the word dizziness is a big and for the most part meaningless word. For the purpose of our discussion, dizziness is a general term for all abnormal symptoms of balance and stability. Lightheadedness is the feeling that we may faint, or when we actually do faint. It may be accompanied by blacking out of the vision, a roaring in the ears, and numbness of the fingers or lips. It often occurs when sitting up or standing from a laying or seated position. It is a sign of inadequate delivery of oxygen to the brain. Common causes include dehydration, anemia, interference with the flow of blood through the arteries to the brain, lung disease, or inadequate pumping of blood by the heart. Medications, particularly ones that affect blood pressure, are an extremely common cause. Vertigo is the illusion of movement of yourself or the environment in the absence of real movement. It is accompanied by instability and frequently by nausea. Vertigo is usually due to a malfunction of the inner ear or its connection to the brain. Balance involves the coordinated function of the balance part of the inner ear, also known as the vestibular labyrinth, as well as its connections in your brain, the information you get from your eyes about your surroundings, and the sensations you perceive from the joints and muscles of your feet, legs, and spine. Many patients can balance reasonably well with mild problems of one or more of these complementary senses. More severe loss of any of the sensations from these systems can lead to marked instability, falling, and injury. When something damages the inner ear, vertigo is the result, especially soon after the damage occurs. The purpose of the inner ear is to maintain stability of our vision when our head is in motion. The parts of the inner ear correct the position of our eyes to keep objects from seeming to jiggle when our head is moving. It does this by sensing the movement of fluid in the organs of balance, the semicircular canals, which sense rotation. The otolithic organs, the utricle and saccule, sense straight line and tilting head movements and play an important role in the system. This is done without our being aware. In fact, the only time we become aware of the important work this system does is when it stops working. Here the arrows point to the fluid-filled semicircular canals. There are three in each ear. The red at the horizontal canal, the blue at the posterior canal, and the yellow at the superior canal. Because of their shape, these organs sense rotation of the head in space. The semicircular canals contain a part, here with the red arrow, that moves like a sail in the wind, called the cupula. When the fluid in the canal moves around the hoop of the canal as the head is rotated, the cupula flexes, and the cells inside it send a signal to the brain via the nerve of balance. That signal, in turn, tells our brain that our head is rotating, and the eyes can be automatically moved to keep vision from blurring. The utricle, indicated by the red arrow, and saccule, indicated by the blue arrow, contain tiny calcium particles, or crystals, that are attached to the sensory part of the organs with a jelly-like material. The crystals are known as otoconia. The utricle and saccule sense straight-line movements of the head, such as rocking and bouncing. They also sense the direction of gravity. As the head moves, inertia slows the calcium crystals stuck on these sensors and causes the delicate sensory cells of the organ to bend, sending nerve impulses to the brain. These microscopic grains of calcium, called otoconia, are an important part of our normal balance system. They are normally held to the surface of the saccule and utricle by a jelly-like substance. Unfortunately, they can be dislodged for a variety of reasons and cause the most common type of vertigo benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, or BPPV. The connections of the inner ear to the brain are complex. The information comes into the brainstem, is modified by the cerebellum, and distributed to many other parts of the nervous system. These connections include the muscles controlling eye movements and posture, parts of the brain responsible for nausea, vomiting, sweating, and diarrhea. The connections also include the conscious parts of the brain, giving us the actual awareness or illusion of movement. 
As a result, when the inner ear malfunctions in some way, abnormal eye movements called nystagmus, abnormal posture such as staggering and falling, and other unpleasant feelings are the result. As I examine patients, I am looking for signs of these abnormalities, which may continue in some form long after the intense feeling of vertigo is gone. Conversely, when a part of the brain that interacts with the balance system malfunctions, feelings of vertigo and signs of disturbed balance function may result. MRI scans of the brain are often done in cases of dizziness and vertigo. In patients with lightheadedness, consultation with an internist or cardiovascular specialist may be recommended. In some patients, evaluation by a neurologist or specialist in the vascular supply to the brain is indicated. Blood testing for inflammatory, hormonal, and infectious causes of dizziness may be ordered. Tests of the balance system are commonly done in patients with vertigo. These are painless tests that can determine the diagnosis, aid in medical or surgical treatment decisions, and monitor the response to treatment. Keep in mind that these tests are a snapshot of the performance of the system at the time the test is done. With the intermittent and recurrent episodes common to patients with vertigo, repeat testing on different days may be occasionally needed to find the abnormality. The most common test ordered is the VNG. In this test, the sensitivity of the inner ear is determined by stimulating the balance system with warm and cool air. Movement of the eyes in response to the stimulation is recorded and measured with goggles fitted with infrared video cameras. Each side is tested separately and the results are compared. The VNG also includes tests of eye movement. For most people, the feeling of dizziness that the warm and cool air tests stimulate is a mild feeling of rolling in space and lasts only a few seconds or a minute after the stimulation is ended. Certain medications, such as sedatives like Valium and Xanax or antihistamines like Dramamine or Antivert, which is known as Meclizine, may reduce the sensitivity and validity of the test. You will be given information about this if the test is scheduled.